So we are in the sermon series. This is the third week of our sermon series, Me in Five Years. And the goal of this series is to help us to take a look down the road and to ask the question, where do I want to be in five years? And what steps do I need to take now to get there? That's the goal. And I want us to do that. I want us to take a strong look at that, a hard look at that, and make some decisions that will make a difference in our lives. Because if you and I keep doing what we're doing right now, we're going to keep getting what we're getting. But if we'll make some little changes, God can do some supernatural things in our life. And I want to begin with this idea, the idea that God has a plan for your life. He really does. There are things that God wants in your life. I believe that God wants you to have a life that is filled with his love, with his peace, with his joy, a life that is filled with his presence. I also know that there are some other people that would have something else for you. In John chapter 10, verse 10, this is my favorite verse in the entire Bible. I always look to this verse because there's a lot in this verse, a lot deeper than just the words that you see there. But Jesus makes a statement. This is Jesus talking, and he makes a statement. He said, there's a thief, and the thief's purpose is to steal from you, to kill, and to destroy things in your life. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your peace. He wants to steal your love. He wants to steal your relationship with God. He wants to destroy. He wants to kill. That's the thief's goal. Like literally, you have an enemy, Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, whose ambition is to radically destroy your life. But you also have God who has a goal for your life. Jesus says, my purpose is to give you a rich and a satisfying life. Now, you, you need to embrace that right there. You just need to embrace the idea that God really does have something more for you. Now, I don't know everything that God has for you in your life, but I do know a few things that he has in your life. One of the things that I know he wants is for you to have a greater relationship with him, a stronger relationship with him. I know that he wants you to experience his love, his peace, his joy, like you have never experienced it before. I know that he wants you to feel happy even when everybody else thinks you don't have a reason to be happy simply because you know who he is in your life. And so this is important that you and I recognize this. There is an enemy who wants to destroy us. God has a plan that is better for us. But there's a third person at play here, and that's you. You have some ideas for your life, some things that you want for your life. And you have to make a decision in all of this. Where are you going to go with your life? There's an idea that you and I have where we would talk about heaven and hell. If I were to ask you the question, would you rather have heaven or would you rather have hell? Most of us, at least I hope all of us, would say heaven. I'll take heaven. You know, streets of gold. There's beautiful rivers, beautiful trees that are always blooming. There's the Bible talks about these majestic mountains that are in heaven. All the the wonderful things, the mansions of heaven. I'll, I'll take heaven over hell any day of the week. The problem is when we ask this question, heaven or earth? Now, that becomes a problem because while you would still say, oh, yeah, heaven, 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 while you would still say that, there's a lot of things here on earth that you like. There are people that you like. There are things doing that you like. There are different activities that you like. There are things in your life that you like and you enjoy. And part of that is because you don't know about heaven other than someone's told you about it. You've read about it in the Bible or you've heard sermons about it, but you really don't know about it because you've never experienced it. You've experienced some good things here on earth. And sometimes that messes us up when we look forward five years and we ask the question, where do I want to be in five years? Because the truth of the matter is, in five years, I want a whole lot more of heaven in my life and a whole lot more of what this world has to offer in my life. And that has to be our idea that I want more of heaven. So the first thing I want to share with you this morning is in five years from now, if you want to be in a better place than you are right now, you need to embrace God's plan for your life and not your plan. Embrace God's plan and not your plan. Now, there's a lot of things I would like to have in this life. I'd like to have 20 acres of property. I'd like to have a couple horses and some cows and some chickens running around. I'd like to have a garden. I don't know why I want all that stuff because I don't want to take care of any of it. I just like the idea of having it. Um, but it's just, you know, that's just something that I would like. But that may not be God's plan for my life. 
We all think, you know, if I had a bigger home or a nicer car or more money in my retirement account so I'd feel more comfortable about retiring. We have all these ideas about what we would want, but those are our plans. Now, to be clear, God's not against you having a 20-acre ranch. He's not against you having a good retirement plan. God's not against all of that. But the idea of embracing God's plan is this, saying, God, I want what you have for me and I want to know and understand what you have for me, and I want to go after that, and I don't want to just pursue my own ideas. I want your ideas in my life. And that's really where we have to start, to have the attitude that says, okay, God, five years from now, I don't want to be where I think I want to be. I want to be where you want me to be, and I want to reshape who I am to desire what you want for my life. And so that it has to begin with embracing his plan. Now, I think that's the easy part. I think embracing God's plan is the easy part. It's the next part that's discouraging and we find difficult. Embrace God's path, not your path. And that's where it gets frustrating sometimes in our walk with God. I want to encourage you this morning because I believe there are some people here where you have prayed some prayers and you felt like nothing happened and you wanted to throw in the towel and quit. You tried to do something. Maybe you decide you're going to read through your Bible and you got to Leviticus and you died and you never got any further in your Bible. I want to encourage you this morning to see a great truth in God's word that will help you get further in your relationship with him. And I'm again with this. Every Tuesday, not almost every Tuesday, we have staff meeting here at the church at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Tuesday mornings, we have staff meeting. All of our staff comes together in the conference room. And every time we gather together in our staff meeting, this question is in our staff meeting notes. If there was one thing we could stop or start as a church, we could start doing it right now or we could stop doing it right now, that would immediately make us better, what would that one thing be? And it doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be a small thing. Like, we need to change the soap in the restrooms. They don't smell good. We need to get a soap that smells better. Or we need to change this brand of that. Or, or, you know, maybe we need to buy more coffee cream. Or I don't know. Just little things. What can help us be better? And sometimes we don't have anything to suggest. And other times there'll be a staff member that has an idea. And we're all like, absolutely, that's a great idea. Let's make that one little change. And so it's just a little change that makes the difference. So with that thought in mind, like if I could change one thing today, like start something or stop something today that would make my life better, take a look at this passage of Scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 16. You must destroy all the nations. Now, before I go any further, let me just share with you, if you're new to the Bible, this part of the story is the beginning of the Bible, and it's where God has brought his, his people, Israel, out of Egypt. He's taken them into the promised land, and these are his directions on how they're going to go in, and they're going to become this nation in this promised land that he has given to them, the part of the directions. He says, go into this new land, and you're going to destroy all the nations that the Lord, uh, your God, hands over to you. And don't show them any mercy, like like scorched earth, no mercy whatsoever. Don't worship their gods or their gods will trap you. Perhaps you think to yourself, how can we, we ever conquer these nations that are so much more powerful than we are? Now just pause there for a moment and, and, and realize what God has told them. I want you to go in and I want you to destroy everything that is in front of you. And that needs to be our attitude sometimes. Sometimes you need a scorched earth mentality If I'm going to make it to the next place, there are some things in my life that I've got to get rid of. I need this out of my life. There may be a person that you need to look at and say, hey, I'm trying to have a relationship with God. You're not helping me. So I either need you to change or our relationship is going to change. You need to have that scorched earth mentality. Maybe it's something in your life that is keeping you from really having a great relationship with God. Maybe you you need to change something in your career. I don't know. There may be something you need to have that mentality. And then God goes on. He says, but maybe you think, how can the Lord do this? I'm afraid. And God says, just remember what I did to Pharaoh and to all the land of Egypt Remember the terrors that the Lord your God sent against them. Everything they did is his outstretched arm. He brought you out of Egypt. He brought you into this land with the same power he's going to do that. And then the Lord your God will send terror to drive out the few survivors that are still hiding from you. Do not be afraid of these people for your Lord. The Lord your God is great among you and he is a great and awesome God. The Lord your God will drive them out little by little. Now, think about what just happened here. God says, I'm going to drive them out before you. 
you're going to be afraid. But I'm going to make it happen for you. Now, here's another truth that I think we need to embrace. I believe that sometimes God says, I want to give this to you. I want, to, I want you to experience this kind of love in your life. Or I want you to experience this kind of presence, my glory, in your life. Or I want you to feel this kind of happiness in your life. But we self-sabotage ourselves because we don't think we're worthy. Like, like God says, I want you to experience what it means to live in my peace at just such a rich level. And we look at ourselves and we don't think, I'm worthy. I've got all these mistakes in my life. I've got all these issues. I've got all these problems. God, if you only knew how mixed up my brain was, you wouldn't even love me, God. And that's what we think. Like there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on up in here. How many of you ever feel like your brain is just crazy, like you're nuts? How many of you ever felt that way? Those of you who didn't raise your hand, I will pray for you that the Lord will work on you and reveal this to you, that you are crazy. You are nuts. We all have it. We all have those times where we're like, I I don't even deserve what God wants to do in my life. And we self-sabotage ourselves. And God says, I want you to remember Pharaoh and what I did to him. So Pharaoh is a long time ago. So let me just bring that closer to you. When you're trying to self-sabotage yourself, here's what I want you to remember. I want you to remember that Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary. He was nailed to that cross. He died for you. He died for your mistakes, your problems, your issues. He took stripes because you needed healing, not just physical healing. You need emotional healing. You need mental healing. He did all that. He was buried in a grave, but he didn't stay in the grave. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He got up. He showed himself alive. That's what you need to remember. Don't look at how difficult the path is, but remember, if God did that for me back then what is he going to do for me today that needs to be my faith that i receive that god will do great things for me and he will i want you to know that god will do supernatural things for you but look at those three little words little by little that's how he's going to do it like you want him to do it in this one big ginormous experience and god's saying you couldn't handle it I'm going to do it little by little. Why can't you not handle it? He says, you will not clear them all the way at once. Otherwise, the wild animals would multiply too quickly for you. They would just, it would be too much. God says, I'm going to give you all this land, but not today. I'm going to give you a little today, and a little tomorrow, and a little the next day. In fact, Joshua, he's the guy leading Israel. He leads them in. He has this massive battle with Jericho. It's awesome. He defeats Jericho. Goes down to the next city. He's so so overconfident about his battle with Jericho. He sends the second string down to Ai. They get beat and a lot of people die. And that's exactly why God doesn't give you the entire land all at once. Because he knows you can only handle a little bit at a time. Now Joshua would go on to fight 10 more battles after those two battles. And would win those battles. But it would take him another 10 years to do that. Little by little... God says, I'm going to do it because if I give it to you all at once, the wild animals will move in and you will not be able to occupy the land. Verse 23, but the Lord your God will hand them over to you. He will throw them into complete confusion until they are destroyed. This is what God says. I do have a plan for your life. It's an amazing plan. It's wonderful and you're going to love it. But I'm not giving it all to you today because if I gave it to you today, it would destroy you. And so I want to give it to you in a way that you can handle it a little bit at a time. Now, here's the problem. Remember, I started with the verse of Scripture, the thief comes not but for steal, to kill, and destroy. That's where I started. The enemy has the same plan for your life that God does. God says, I'm going to do this little by little because I know you can't handle a lot at a time. And the enemy says, I'm only going to kill you a little bit at a time because I know if I attack you, everybody will rally around you. Like if you get really attacked by the enemy, what are you going to do? You're going to email people. You're going to call people. You're going to post it on Facebook. You're going to put it on Instagram. You're going to get on TikTok and Twitter. You're going to do everything you can. You're going to rally people around. You're going to have people fasting for you, praying for you. You're going to do all that. And so the enemy says, I'm not going to do that big attack because I know they will call for help. But if I just try to kill them a little bit at a time. There's a Chinese torture method. How anybody could come up with this, I have no idea. Like, you have to really be messed up in your head. It's called Ling Chi. In our language, it's a death by a thousand cuts. And this is what they would do. They wanted to torture someone. They would tie them to a post, and then they would just cut a little piece of them off every day. 
Every day they just come by and cut a slice of them off. How would you like to die like that? Like they're feeding you. Like here's some filet mignon and sweet potato with all the fixings on top. It's marshmallows and brown sugar and cinnamon and whatever else they put on there that makes it taste so amazing. And they're keeping you alive, but then they're just coming by and they're just going to slice a little piece of you off. And they would do that until it killed the person. Death by a thousand cuts. That's how the enemy wants to kill you, a little bit at a time. He doesn't want to come at you in some big rush because you'll call for help. But if he just attacks you a little bit at a time, he can destroy you. Now, the opposite is true and more so, and that is this. God wants to bless you a little bit at a time. He wants to heal you a little bit at a time. He wants to lift you up a little bit at a time. He wants to bring you forward a little bit at a time. And the enemy will not be able to do anything to stop God from doing that. The enemy will have to back off. The enemy will only have that if you allow the enemy to have that place in your life. What you need to do is say, God, I know you're going to bring me on a little bit at a time, and I'm going to receive that. I'm going to take that. Another Chinese philosopher, and I like this a whole lot better, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. In other words, I know that's where I want to go, but I can't take one giant step to get a thousand miles. I have to take one small step, and I'll keep taking one step after the next step over and over and over again until I've traveled this thousand miles, and I'll look back and someone will say, how in the world did you do that? How did you do that so quickly? And your answer will be, there was nothing quickly about it. It was one step at a time, just one small step, and that's exactly how God wants to bring you into the greatness that he has for you. He wants to bring you into the riches, the love, the mercy, his presence, his glory, one small step at a time. I love to eat eggs for breakfast. Actually, I, I don't love to eat eggs for breakfast. I just do. I don't know why. It's like, that's what you do. You eat eggs for breakfast. But I wonder sometimes, like this is where my brain goes. You know, when, it, when a chicken hatches out of the egg, that's pretty cool to us, right? Like we're standing there and, and, and it's just a little egg. And all of a sudden the egg starts shaking. And then all of a sudden it, it breaks open and then the cutest little chicken pops out. And we're like, oh, that's so adorable. That's so cute. I love it. What a breakthrough. But what if you asked the chicken? What if, you, what if you interviewed the chicken? Like if you would interview the chicken, like tell me about this breakthrough that you just had. How awesome was that? You know what the chicken's response would be? There was no breakthrough. There's a lot that's been happening inside that shell for quite a while. A lot of things have been happening. And so what looks like a breakthrough to you was just the next step and a long journey of steps. A lot of steps have taken place. Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, people were asking him, how, how was Walmart such an incredible overnight success? And, and Sam Walton's response, and I love this, he said, like most other overnight successes, it was about 20 years in the making. In other words, there was nothing overnight about it. And here's what I know about you. If you will allow God to bring you on little bit by little bit by little bit, there will be people who will come up to you and they will ask you, tell me, what's the secret to your amazing relationship with God? They'll want to know, is there a book that you read? Was there a prayer that you prayed? Was there a sermon that you heard? What was it about your relationship? How did you get to where you are in your relationship with God? You have this incredible, amazing, beautiful, wonderful experience with God. Tell me your secret. And the answer and you're going to have to look at them, and you're going to say, you don't want to know. And no, 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 I want to know what your secret is. And No, you don't want to know what my secret is because my secret's boring. Well, it can't be that boring. You have this incredible relationship with God. What's the answer to this amazing relationship? Okay, but you're going to be disappointed. Okay, what is it? Little by little, step by step, one victory here, a little victory there. No big days. Yeah, I fought a battle here and I won a battle there. But there was no big moment. It was just a little bit at a time that I grew into this relationship with God. God allowed me to go at the speed that I could handle. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't inspire me. That doesn't encourage me until I realize that that is the path that God has chosen for me. And God says, yeah, I do want to give you this glory right here. And you're over here. And the only way to get from, from where you are to where I want you to be is to begin a journey of steps, one after the next. I like how 
Stephen Guise, he wrote a book called Many Habits. He makes this statement. He says, be the person with embarrassing goals, like small goals, tiny goals, like so small you wouldn't want to tell anyone that you had. It was like your goal is like to do, I don't want to do 20 push-ups a day. I just want to do one push-up a day. And people are like, what's your exercise routine? One push-up a day. That's nothing. I can do that. Embarrassingly small goals with impressive results. He said, be that person instead of the many people who have big, ginormous goals. I'm going to join the gym at the beginning of the year, and I'm going to work out every day, and I'm going to lose all this body fat, and I'm going to be all muscular, and I'm going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in about three weeks. Impressive goals with embarrassing results. Now, here's how that looks biblically. Here's how that looks in your life. We always start the year saying, I'm going to read through the Bible this year. And then when we get to Leviticus, we crash and burn. You know what would be a better thing to do? Is to say, I'm just going to read one page a day. That's not even a whole chapter. Just one page a day. And some of you, your Bible is so small with a large print, one page a day might take you about five seconds to read. But that's okay. Embarrassingly small goals with impressive results. Do you know that the vast majority of Christians have never even read the New Testament? They haven't read through the whole Bible. The vast majority of them have never even completed the New Testament. And so if you just did it one day, one page at a time, and you completed the New Testament, that puts you in the upper echelon of, of Christians who have actually read through the New Testament. That's why Jesus says in Matthew 6, 11, give us today the food that we need, the day today, the food that I need today, give me that. And so you're like, these small steps, what are some of these small steps that I could take? What, is, what are some of these little steps? One of the things we do here at First Church, and I love this, we have Saturday morning prayer at 9 a.m. And yesterday, it was amazing. Thank you so much to our worship team who leads our Saturday morning prayer. It was just, I didn't want to leave. It was just so incredible. Starts at 9. We're always done by 9.50. It was just a beautiful thing. And you think to yourself, well, what is one Saturday morning at 9 o'clock? Little by little. What, why even by, I mean, I, I can do that at home, little by little. And every part of it counts. And you're thinking to yourself, what, what, okay, that, that's one thing. What's, what's another thing? Well, just do the little by little. Start reading that one page a day. And then maybe grow from that to two pages. And then grow from two pages to three pages. And now you're reading a chapter a day. And then when you get from, from that, grow into two chapters a day. And just little by little. And you're coming to Saturday morning prayer. And you're worshiping God. Now God's dealing with you. Okay, I, I need to join the dream team. I've been coming to this church a while. I, I need to get on the guest services team. I need to start helping. Well, what's the big deal about being on the guest services team. They only serve one Sunday a month. I promise you, when you're out there and you're holding that door and you're shaking hands and you're smiling at people and you're hugging necks, you are making a difference in other people's lives, but there is something little by little that's happening in your life and it's so imperceptible, you don't even know that you're making progress. You don't even know you're growing. But a year from now, you look back and you begin to think, oh my, I just started with one page a day. I just started by coming to Saturday morning prayer. Now now look what God is doing in my life. And then you go on to two years and you're looking back and you're beginning to see God is doing some really crazy things in my life. Well, how did it happen? A little here, a little there, step by step. That's how it takes place. And so the first thing I have to do is embrace God's plan, that God's plan is better than mine. The second thing I have to do is embrace God's path, that even though I may not like his path, his path is the right path. Because I have prayed prayers and been frustrated with God that God didn't answer the way I want him to answer. But his path is the right path. But then when you are successful, celebrate the little successes. Celebrate the little successes. So for the person who's here, who's never read through the Bible, and you're deciding, you know what, I'm going to do that one page at a time. I'm going to get me a large print Bible, and I'm going to read one page at a time. When you, get, when you read that first page, I don't want you to close your Bible and think, well, I didn't do anything. I want you to, I want you to look at what you've accomplished and, and think to yourself little by little, and I want you to be like, yep, I did it. I, I'm so awesome. I'm amazing. I'm the, most, I'm the greatest person that's ever alive. And your wife is going to look at you, and she's going to be like, what are you, what, what are, what's going on over there? And you're going to say, I did it. And she's going to say, you did what? I read one page. And she's thinking, so what? But you're, you know I just took a step that before now I had not taken before. And tomorrow I'm going to take another step. 
And the next time I take another step, and every time I take a step, maybe it's a step in giving. Maybe you haven't started giving financially, and so you want to start that. God, I'm going to start giving to your church. Every time I get a paycheck, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give a little bit of it to you. And that may not seem like a lot to other people, but you need to celebrate. God, I am starting a new step right here. Maybe it's you want to help in children's ministry. You like kids, but you've never volunteered. And so you want to start by just serving Kool-Aid and goldfish. What's the big deal about goldfish and Kool-Aid? A little here, a little there. Just one step after the next. And keep doing that, because as you're doing that, you will grow in your relationship with God. In fact, the prophet Zechariah says it like this, do not despise these small beginnings. It may seem small to everybody else, embarrassingly small, but God says, I rejoice to see the work begin. In the book of Job, he said it like this, you started with little, but you will end with much. And so celebrate those things because five years from now, if you if you allow God to take you a little bit by little bit, five years from now, you're going to look back and you're going to see that you have grown monstrously in your relationship with God. You have more of his presence. You have more of his glory. You're experiencing more of his power. You're, you, you, you understand more of his word. You just feel the wisdom from God. I want more wisdom. I want more knowledge. I want more understanding. And you'll experience that. I want more peace. And you'll experience all that God has for you. And somebody's going to say, tell me the secret. How did you get there? And you're just going to have to look at him and say, I'm sorry. I just did a little bit at a time. A little here. A little there. God just brought me on little by little, but I'm rejoicing in where I am today. It may have seemed slow to everybody else, but I'm glad today to know that I am growing in my relationship with God. Will you stand to your feet? Let's clap the Lord. Let's clap our hands to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Let's do that. Let's do that big time. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Oh, in the name of Jesus. I know God's going to do some great things in your life. He is. I know He's going to if you'll embrace His path. If you'll embrace His path. You want God to do something supernatural in your, in your family. And God's saying, yeah, I'm, I want to do that for you. But it's, it's going to be like this. It's going to be a little bit here and a little bit there. I don't know who I'm speaking to. But I want you to know this. You want your marriage to be better. And God said, I want your marriage to be better. But you're going to have to accept the little steps. And take it a little step at a time. And I will turn your marriage around. There won't be one day that everything changes. It'll just be a day here and a day there. Maybe it's your relationship with your children. You want your relationship with your children to be better. Take God's path. Take God's path. A little here, a little there. And you'll look back and you won't know, when did that happen? When did that relationship repair? When did it heal? And you won't be able to put a finger on it. You'll just know it was a little bit at a time. And that's God's word. I'm going to do a little by little in the name of Jesus. There's an area up front. We intentionally set it aside. We leave it open just so people can take a step of faith. A step of faith that says, God, I want what you have for me. I want what you have for me. And I'm going to invite you to come. I'd like for all of you to come. You don't have to come, but I'd like for you to come if you'd like to. In fact, I'll just tell you, it's a safe place to come. I'll take you by the hand and pray with you, but no one, no one else probably will come and pray with you. So if you're worried about whether or not anyone's going to do that, it's just between you and God. It really is. It's between you and God. And you can come up here and just embrace what God has for you and say, God, I want that. I want that in the name of Jesus. And while I'm praying, if you'd like to come, just make your way forward in the name of Jesus. Father, little by little doesn't sound exciting, but what you have for us is exciting, and I want that. I want what you have for me. I'd love to have it all today, but you know I can't handle it all today, and so you're going to give it to me one step at a time. And so, Father, I pray for me, and I pray for everybody here, that you will help us to embrace taking one step at a time just one step, one small step, a step today, a step tomorrow, a step the day after that, on a journey of a thousand miles, just getting closer to you, getting higher in you, deeper in you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for everyone. I pray for everyone that is here, Lord. I want them to know you, to love you, and experience you, everything you have for us, in the name of Jesus.